the stripinado. You must take a small piece of hair, about that much. Between your thumb and the knife. You put the knife down very close to the skin and you pull hard. In fact, you can even pluck it. A little bit of hair and you pull and the hair comes out by the roots. Notice how hard I'm pulling. Pull. Pull. You only hurt the dog by taking too much hair at a time. You never hurt the dog by pulling too hard if you don't have too many hairs. The finished product, the dog is completely bare, like so. With the knife, you take a few hairs at a time. So many hairs at a time. And you pull. You hold the skin firm with the other hand, like that. So you're essentially pulling one hand against the other. It's a good idea for beginners to do it quite slowly at first, making certain you do not take too many hairs at a time. A few hairs, a sharp pull. If, in fact, you get a few hairs and you don't hold it tight enough between your knife and the thumb, you will slide across the top of the hair. You won't pull any out, or very few. You'll pull the dog's skin and it's completely wasted effort. So I do stress that you take only a few hairs at a time and you pull. Here is a piece of hair that I have just taken off Rolls Royce. You will notice the colour of this hair is very much richer on this end than it is down this end. Now if you continually clipper a dog you actually are cutting it here so that pale hair remains and you never get the fresh, young, richly coloured hair which is shown by these pieces on the end. Now if you wish to maintain the colour on your dog, you must hand strip the dog. The purpose of stripping also has a double effect of texture. You will notice that these hairs are very much thicker on this end than what they are on this. So hand stripping the dog has the double role of maintaining the harder texture of this end of the hair as well as the richer colour. So we strip the dog down to bald like that so that when the new coat comes through it is all ends of hair that are appearing through the skin and they are all a beautiful rich colour as the ends of those hairs were plus it has that lovely hard texture the Airedale is known for. I am now going to show you how to strip a dog from scratch. I have here a dog which has not been stripped for some six months. A sight familiar to most of you. Looks pretty terrible, doesn't it? We start stripping at the top of the shoulder blade, which is here. Using the action that I showed you previously, you take a small amount of hair and you pull. It's easier with the dog sitting, keeping this side firm. It is easier if you make an initial hole right down to the skin. Like so. And 
and you work from that hole in the same direction. I do find people going in this spot and taking a bit off there and a bit off here and a bit off there and a bit off there. No, keep working in the same place. I am now going to strip out stage one, the saddle of the dog. From here to the underline or the tan beneath, following the tan of the legs around here to the base of the tail. Diagrammatically, here we have an ungroomed dog. Diagrammatically, here we have the area we are now about to strip bald. You start here at the withers, as I showed you on the live dog. You work across to the tan on the top of the shoulder here. You work down between the tan and the black of the dog there. You leave the tan underline here. You then leave the tan of the back leg and you follow that line right around here and you leave the tail. So the area shaded in black, which is actually the black saddle of the dog, is the area which we are now stripping. Stripping in progress. You can now see the area that I'm covering. Starting at the withers, where you saw me before, following the tan of the shoulder down to the underline under here, around on the tan of the leg. That is the saddle area I am stripping. Note the action. Real jerk. Not too much hair between your thumb and your finger and a real jerk or pull. I am now following the tan area around the top of the leg. Then a point. That is what the skin looks like and the body looks like with a small amount of fluff left. If you want to be really fastidious, you can always go over and take every last hair off. And in fact, many years ago, I remember somebody bringing a dog back to me with the saddle so bald, she spent 10 hours going over the dog with a pair of tweezers getting every last hair out and what a beautiful body coat that dog subsequently grew. There is no need to do that. In fact, that's quite good enough. But you'll see the jerking action that I use, how slow the progress is and why we do the dog in stages. It is preferable really to hold the skin firm like so. But for the purpose of this video, you can't see me working, so I am actually holding the skin firm from beneath the dog. We have now almost finished stripping the back out. Just a couple more things. I already mentioned about holding the skin firm, holding it tight, if you don't, you pull the dog's skin relative to its body and the dog will object. It is also important to pull along the skin like you're seeing me do. I occasionally see people pulling upwards this way and look what that does to the poor dog and they will object. So you must pull backwards that way, holding the skin firm, close to the body. 
It is also important, as I said before, not to take too much hair at a time, to really jerk, jerk, a real jerk. Don't go too fast. It is also important not to turn your wrist this way. Not that that will hurt the dog, but it will certainly hurt you and you'll find that you'll then get tendonitis and strain up the back of your wrist. So keep your hand firm, in place, move straight down the dog's body and steady the skin from somewhere around the area in which you are stripping. You might wonder why I have left this piece here and why I haven't told you to take it right off across there. The reason being, nearly all dogs dip in the back in this area here. And from then on, from the withers upwards, the hair is tougher it grows quicker and that is where dogs raise their hackles at one another and it is therefore a tougher, firmer hair altogether. So, if we give this area three weeks over this area up here and leave that section back onto the withers itself, you'll find in the next shot that I'll be showing you how to blend the back neck into this area after this is grown and you'll see the overall effect if this area is done just that little bit later. Diagrammatically again, this is the area that has been stripped. That area will now have three weeks growth on it and I will show you what length of hair to expect. In this diagram, the black area is the area I have stripped next. Right through the back of the neck to the tan at the base of the ears and about halfway across the neck widthwise. And the whole of the tail. Look what a beautiful coat we've grown in just three weeks. That is how long it is. Just barely through. Just a few millimetres long really. About a quarter of an inch. This coat has been maintained in this time with an ordinary brush. We just simply brush the dog over. The dogs love it. Brush it over just for a minute or so each day and it stimulates the hair follicles and makes the dog feel good. I don't feel there's any need to do anything else with a new coat coming through but brush it. But I will say that perhaps an egg three times a week does bring up a nice shiny coat. The next area I have already stripped is the back of the neck. I showed you this on the diagram. We started off here where we left before. We came up about half the width of the neck as I said before to the back of the ear across the top of the skull there and that area will grow through quicker than the body coat. In fact, the next time you see this dog will be in two weeks' time and you'll see that this hair will already be the length of that this hair is now. You'll notice this hair is also flat at the moment and there is no crinkles that the Airedale is noted for. That crinkling will come within the next two or three weeks. I have also stripped the tail.
front and back. All dogs have a funny little baldy spot here on their tails where they sit on it. So don't be worried if that comes out extra bald or seems to take a bit longer to grow. All dogs have that balded spot and you haven't damaged your dog in any way. I don't know why the hair is thinner there, but that it is on every dog I've ever seen. Of course, the whole idea of stripping the dog in stages is a reverse strip. That is, we do the areas first that we want to be the longest when we've finished. So, the dog sitting in the back, that has an extra three weeks over this higher portion here. That's what you can expect the coat to look like two weeks later. You can see that I am just starting to get a little tiny bit of wrinkle on the body coat. There's one little wrinkle, there's another. In another two weeks time those wrinkles will be quite clear cut. Also in the close up you will be able to see the white hairs coming through, an odd white hair, and perhaps an odd brown hair. Now some dogs vary. This dog has a mixture of white hairs through the black and brown hairs through the black. The mixture of the white and the brown through the black is called grizzle. There are very few Airedales with jet black coats. And in fact, those white or brown hairs are actually in texture harder. So it's a good thing having them there. And it's quite normal. And in a very young puppy, if you're doing it for the first time at three or four months of age, you'll see many more white or brown hairs coming through than that, which is nothing to worry about at all. And some dogs have a distinct red triangle of red grizzle coat coming through in this area here and that is present in some strains of Airedale but not in this particular dog. Now you can see how the hairs come through on the neck and it's almost completely grown over at the juncture of where I stripped it the first time and where I stripped it three weeks later. In another two weeks' time, that line of demarcation will have completely disappeared. Well, I am now going to strip the shoulders, the side of the neck, the top of the head and the ears. Diagrammatically, this is the area that has now grown through, so all the dotted area has now been stripped. Diagrammatically, I am now going to strip this area which is in black. The top of the head and the ears, the sides of the neck down to a seam which I shall show you when I'm working on the dog, across to the brisket bone, the whole of the shoulders leaving enough hair in the furnishings to blend in later, and finishing off at the saddle area where I was before and also I am going to strip the bum. I am now working down the shoulder or I have worked down the shoulder from up here and I'm going down on the outside. You'll note how bald the skin is. Now one thing I forgot to mention before on the knife. Some beginners hold the knife that way. That is quite wrong. The knife should be held so that your thumb is flat on the side of the knife like that with the hair between. 
flat on the side. It is also very important that your blade is right next to the skin itself. If the blade is halfway up the skin, up the hair itself like that, you don't get the hair out cleanly. See the difference? That's how it should be done with every stroke. The blade is actually next to the skin. Note also, I'm holding the skin from up on top of the shoulder. Now, when you're holding the dog's skin, it's very important that you don't displace the skin of the dog relative to the dog's skeleton. Because if you do, you're going to muck up all your lines. Obviously, if I pull that hair up to there, then I'm not going to be able to tell exactly where the elbow is. So when you do it, just hold it firmly or even grab it just above where you're working. But always stop and check exactly where the skin is relative to the dog's skeleton. I am now working down to a point about one inch above the dog's elbow. There is his elbow there. I've just purposely left that a little bit too high because that's how you have to leave it for the blending. So at this point of time, you're working just above there on the top of the leg is far enough. And at the elbow side, or around here, a little bit further down, you take it off pretty well into the dog's, what would be the flank if it's the back leg, but that loose bit of skin there behind the elbow. That must all be fairly clean at this point of time. And note where I'm holding the skin too, from underneath. If I wasn't holding it, of course, that would really pull the dog badly. So put your hand in behind and then you can just get those long curls off. And you can also see exactly where you are. Now for the purposes of blending, that shoulder is down far enough to there. Just in virtually a straight line across. Later on in the tape, I'll show you how to blend that into the leg hair. On the front of the dog, I'm still working around around the chest to the brisket bone. From this angle, you can see the straight line across here where I stopped taking the hair from the outside shoulder off and from there I will start blending it into the leg at a later point of time. I have also started at the brisket bone which is that really prominent lump there that all dogs have and I am working down into the leg hair in the front. A lot of the dogs don't like this very much. You will also note that I am still holding the dog from up on top. Now we come right down into the, almost into the point where the leg actually commenced. There's the junction of the leg itself and the shoulder. There. So, I'm leaving the hair just above that point so we've got room to blend at a later date. So, in the front of the dog, I am coming from the brisket bone to a point just above where the leg joins the shoulder. And once again, in quite a straight line. That will be blended at a later date. In fact, on this dog you can see where it has been blended before, really. That hair is longer than this. But I'll be blending this hair into this at a later date. So that when the dog stands up, you do get a straight line right through. 
I am now working to the seam on the neck. By the seam, I mean it's where the hair grows that way, that way, and from the cheek that way. And you will find a distinct line or seam. And when you reach that, you stop. You will also notice that I am holding the dog still by the back of the neck to keep the skin firm. And I am working down in a strip, down around to the brisket bone. I have now completed the area of the side of the neck and the shoulders. You can see this is the seam here. The hair is going that way. You can just see where the hair was coming that way. And there I am halfway up the dog's neck, this area all being his throat actually. And behind here, going into the area of the back of the neck, which we did two weeks ago. And here is the beginning of the leg. You'll see that this area is completely bald, completely. And you'll be surprised how quickly that'll come through. Because in two weeks only, this hair here was like the area on the side of the neck. And in two weeks, that has grown from that to that. You start stripping the dog's head just immediately above his eye. Come on, wake up. Wake up, come on. There's his eye. And you start at this point here. Firstly into a hole, like I've shown you before on the back, into a hole. And there is the head absolutely bald on that bit of skull. Pink skin, in fact, showing right through. That is where you commence to strip. You will notice that I am working with the dog's head on my lap. I often work with very young puppies sitting on the table with the dog on my lap, or part of the dog on my lap, and I do find that sometimes for a change, it's a little bit easier to just balance the dog on your knee, especially if you've been working on him for some time. I don't expect the dog to stand the whole time I'm working on him, and in fact, that's a very comfortable position for me. You'll also notice where I'm actually holding the hair with the other hand to keep his skull quite firm. No dog appreciates his head being pulled around. And in fact, even this boy who's been stripped quite a bit wouldn't stand for it. But he's very happy to just sit there with his head on the lap while I'm working on him. I have now worked up the dog's skull to the back of his neck. I find to get in behind the ears, I just hold the ear out of the way like so, here's his ear, like so, and I'm actually holding the skin firm with the rest of my arm while I work. 
and that's how you get in to the back, on the back of the dog's ears, which is quite an awkward little place really to get at. It's also important to come up on the very end of the knife itself and put, come right up on the top of the knife itself on the pointing fact because there are wrinkles in there and little dents and hollows and if you're holding the knife right up on its point like that you can well and truly get in there and don't take too much hair at a time. And there I have come up leaving the ear itself and I have joined to the section on the back of the neck and that goes into the skull. I have now worked over the whole of the skull. I started at this point here, you'll remember just above the eye. There is the corner of the dog's eye there. I have worked in a line just below his eye to his ear, just a little bit below that, in fact, about half an inch below a line from his eye to the top of his ear. There's the edge of his ear there. And that's where I've stripped to. I've done the whole of his skull. I showed you doing the back of the head into the area that I'd worked into before. It's now adjoining the hair on the back neck. And I've done him right onto the other side to the other ear. And that's what it looks like. In the front, from the outside edge of the eye, I have actually come back slightly into a V to a point in the middle of his skull. And this area here will be blended into the eyebrows and into the nose later on when I show the spine grooming. You will note that I'm still working with the dog with his head on my lap. I do find that a comfortable position. I'm now starting on the ear itself. I'm holding a handful of the ear right behind and supporting it on my hand. I shall now work all over the flap of the ear itself. The ears are very tender. And it is most important when working on the ear, you take only a very small bit of hair at a time. Because if you take too much, you will hurt the dog. Just a small, oh don't be silly, just a small bit of hair at a time. And to get into this back edge, note I'm flipping the ear forward this way. And that way you can come down the back edge of the ear. I have now completed the ear flap itself. Right to the edge. I have done the whole of that flap. Now it's a good idea to turn the ear inside out, like so. And the whole of that area has to be cleared off. Now this is rather tricky. So I hold the ear back against the head itself and you get out the hairs from inside the ear which the dogs do not like and it's often a good idea to use your fingers. 
to it. And then you're not going to damage the dog's ears with implements. And you're also not going to take too much hair at a time. The action with your fingers is identical to the action I was using with the knife. Just a sharp jerk, but it's very much slower. But where you require dead accuracy, which I will show you in the section on fine grooming or blending, it's often preferable to use your fingers. So with my fingers, I'm taking out every single hair from the inside flap of that ear and all around the orifice itself. Never, never, never put things down the dog's orifice to get hair out. By things, I mean tweezers, forceps, etc. I sold a dog to a guy some years ago and he was cleaning the ears out with a Johnson's cotton bud, the ears on a three month old pup as a matter of fact. And he pierced the bud through the hole of that dog's ear. And that dog was permanently deaf in that ear and never held its head actually straight again. And it was a very bitter lesson both for me and for that person. So only ever use your fingers in that orifice itself. Now, I've cleaned the inside of the ear quite clear of the hole or the orifice. You can now get your knife back again or continue it with your ears. Note I'm still working with his head on my lap. But I've now come up to the very edge. Now with the edge, you must go very, very slowly and carefully. Keep still, you naughty boy. Taking every single hair out. First from that side, then from the other. Always working from the inside of the ear back that way and never ever backwards into the flap because that might cause you to actually cut the flap. Always working that way. So from the top of the ear that way down from underneath the ear you must once again work that way, upwards. So firstly from one side, then from the other. See, I'm supporting the ear with my finger. The dogs don't like it, but if you don't take too much hair at a time, it isn't too bad on them. And you can get a beautiful finish and get right to the edge of the ear so that the edge of the ear itself is completely bald and completely nude inside and out. I have now worked right around the flap of the ear and I've gone into this tricky little piece at the back of the ear where you have a flap. Now, this little bit upsets a lot of people, so I'm especially filming it. Every single dog has a natural flap of air there where the skin stops and there's another flap of actual skin there underneath. So you've got that flap there and that flap there. And the only way you can strip those funny little flaps is, as I was saying before, go to one side, then you must go to the other. And I have completed that section of the flap. 
I am now going to complete this little section here. There's the flap. There I am on the other side, just with my fingers to completely get it clean. And there's the other piece of skin there, which I am now going to work on by putting my finger underneath it to steady it, working from the inside outwards, taking a very little hair at a time, right up on the point of the knife, doing it from the inside and then turning over and doing it from the outside and getting the remainder of the hair off. Good boy, come on. And there I have that little flap done. I have left the hair from there because that runs into the cheek area along there that we do at a later date and we stop here at the base of the ear. I have now completed the ears and the top head. The cheeks and throat will be done next week. I will tell you why when I'm doing them. So at this point of time, we have the top head and ears done with that blending into the back neck which was done two weeks ago. I have also completed... Dinner, but, come on, up a day. I have now also completed the strip down the side of the neck and the shoulder. And this is how your dog should look at this point of time. I am now going to start stripping the hindquarters. But firstly, in order to keep my eye level with the area that I am about to strip, I have bought myself a nice little office chair. And I can trundle myself all around the dog like that and see exactly where I am. Just a little tip, something I've found useful over the years. Now, before you start on the hindquarters, it is absolutely essential that you comb the dog first. You must comb the leg. Firstly down, then grabbing the leg by the foot here, Hold the foot 360 degrees. You must comb right around the dog, paying special attention to his personal parts right underneath here, which he won't appreciate. But it's impossible to strip the dog if there's not any. So you comb the leg up. All the way around, you give it a shake, and you comb it roughly down. You will note that I am using the coarse end of the OSCO comb only. This end down here you only use on the saddle or the black area of the dog, but the coarse end only on the furnishings or you'll comb them all out and your dog will be left with not too much furnishings. So having combed the leg round, we now start stripping the dog. The area I am now going to strip is from the base of the tail here where the black joins the tan. So that is where you stopped stripping last time. From the base of the tail you follow the seam down here. Now by the seam, as with the side of the neck, you will find on the hindquarters that the hair grows in that direction, in that direction, and in that direction. And you've got a definite seam up there. And as you work on the dog, you will find that seam quite pronounced. But roughly, it's a strip about the same width 
as the base of the tail itself down there. You'll see as I go down. From the bottom, you stop where the leg bends. And that's quite distinct. At the point where the leg bends, that is where you stop. Now you must hold the dog from underneath when you get further down. So I'll start stripping and you'll be able to see exactly. I'm now going in a strip the width of his tail. If you don't take too much hair at a time, and you don't pull the dog too much, you hold the skin firm from the top, the dog won't mind too much or you keep it down to a minimum. I have now done the strip from the base of the tail down here for a couple of inches. These pieces here will be left for blending later on. So don't strip any more out than a couple of inches down the width of the tail itself. The rest of the hindquarters will be done from this indentation working upwards along the seam. I'm actually starting rather than stopping at this point here. So I shall now, holding the dog's skin firm from right underneath, I am stripping upwards. See the little hole that I've got? There. almost inside of the leg. It is difficult because you write onto the dog's personal parts. Now we'll go up to the top where I finished the little strip before and I'll work down into the hole that I've made and that way you won't go too far. A small amount of hair at a time as I said before. Come on boys, keep it good. I am holding the tail out of the way with my thumb. See the strip I have now done from this section here where the leg joins there, right there. I have now stripped it in a strip on the inside of his leg. Up. Do that section I showed you before on the tail and here is the seam just beginning to appear which I am now working out to and it is actually on the inside of the thigh itself. Note how I'm holding the leg or the skin firm from underneath. There is the hair going that way. And when I join the hair going in the opposite direction, I stop. Note, I am still holding the skin 
firm from underneath with this hand here. Note also that I am working with the grain of the hair itself. Now here comes the seam appearing now. See how that hair is growing that way and that hair is growing down. Those pieces I am removing. The pieces that are down I am removing. I'm nearly there. There's a little bit still to come off. Here. There is the seam. See the seam there? Those hairs are going that way. I am now going to strip the same area on the other leg down to the seam. You can see how that hair naturally falls in this way. And in fact, up here, there's even a little natural curl that shows you where you should be stopping, where the hair actually joins from going round that way and round that way and upwards, just there. So, in case you haven't got it all right, I'm going to start and strip down on the other side. There's the little two inches that I started off with. See, just the width of the tail. There. Right. We start from that point there. And I'm working down to the seam. Note as the hair grows that way, I am stripping across. Then, as I said on the other leg, you start from the indentation or the back side of the stifle, which is on the other side of the leg. You make a hole in here, like so. and you strip up adjoining that area that I have already done here. <laughs> Come on boy, stand up. Good boy. I am now approaching the area of the seam. I am now approaching the seam again. Now, perhaps we can bring the camera in and I'll show you exactly where this seam is as I'm approaching it. Seeing it seems to be so very, very difficult for some people. The point here that I have shown you so, so many times before that I start at, the curls going back that way. And now those ones coming that way, they make a join in the hair. The curls going that way and that hair lying naturally that way. I hope you can see that clearly. It is to where those two meet there is a definite line on the dog and you can see and feel the hair changing direction and it is to there that I strip. There's a couple of curls just lying inwards there. And there I am coming into the seam with just two curls left. See those curls there? See that hair going the other way? Those curls that way, that hair going the other way. 
these are the curls you take off which leaves you with the seam of hair lying in the opposite direction. If you don't get the particular area stripped out correctly at this point of time, for you people that are going to go on and show, you'll never get the colour through. Now we're practically up there. Now, can you see how that hair is naturally lying that way? You see the little curl where that's lying naturally that way? Maybe just a couple more hairs there. Now that seam, that area is now complete on his bum and that seam is pretty well midway across the dog's thigh itself. So there's the outside of his thigh, stand still. There's the outside of his thigh, there's the inside and there goes the seam halfway as you look at the dog dead hind on. That seam is halfway across the width of the back leg itself. And just recapping from that area there to a point a little below the width of the tail and just to the centre of the leg on the inside as well. It is also very important to clear the hair from around the dog's personal parts, which is not a very nice area to be working on and once again requiring dead accuracy, perhaps better working with the fingers. But it gives a much cleaner effect if you do strip that hair with your fingers, a much cleaner effect to the back and if in fact you think that it is a little bit kinder for the dog to have the hair cut with scissors. I can assure you it isn't because the poor dog then gets clipper rash, scissor rash as the hair grows through. Where it's been cut, it is very sharp and it grows through and hurts the dog. I can assure you you're much better off, if you can bear to do it, to pull the hairs out from around the dog's personal parts with your fingers. That area is now complete and ready to be blended in two weeks' time. This is a different camera angle just to show you the inside of the hind leg. I have now cleaned all around the personal parts or as close as I wish to get from hair. Now, regarding this area on the inside of the back leg, some people have some trouble with it, but it's quite simple really, because there is the width of the dog's leg itself, and you go exactly halfway up the inside of its thigh to the flank. So my finger is now in the flank, and if I draw a line down to this point here, that is where I have taken the hair off to halfway because it's necessary for this hair here to be longer so that you get a better turn of stifle on the dog and you can keep that hair longer so the back leg looks better bent. So halfway on the inside, up to the seam here, up to the base of the tail, that is the area that is now stripped. Next week I shall do the cheeks and throat, which completes my six weeks stripping program. However, for you people who wish to show the dog, please 
least two weeks from now before your dog is actually exhibited in the show ring. You must understand it takes two weeks for the tan on the head, ears, neck and shoulders to come through sufficiently rich for the dog to be exhibited and the cheeks and throat only really require one week. In two weeks time I shall do the fine grooming but next week completes my six weeks of actual stripping progress. Diagrammatically, your dog now looks like this, with the head, sides of the neck, shoulders and the bum just covering. We are now going to strip out the cheeks and the throat. From here, the area is simple. You just connect it up with what's been done before. But where it joins the beard takes a little bit of attention. You have to go downwards from the eye and across horizontally to the corner of the mouth and then vertically down to the beard line. I will show you exactly this tricky area when I am actually working on the dog. Look how the dog's grown through in one week. You'll be surprised just how fast this coat altogether grows at this point of time. The wrinkles in the body coat that we stripped before, now five weeks ago, those wrinkles are quite distinct. You can see one wrinkle and the next and the next and the next. And look at the grizzle hairs in his coat. Quite a nice shiny coat. And this line of demarcation here has completely blended in with the body coat. You can't see it at all. And the back of the neck is practically blended into the side neck area which was quite bald last week. It's really amazing how fast that all grows. And there is some tan showing up on the top of his head and his ears. By next week, that will be a lovely rich colour. See how nice the neck looks? It'll look even better with all of this off. So I am now going to strip the cheeks and the throat. Stripping in progress. Oh, it's a good feeling to be working on the cheeks and throat at last. And now we're on the final home stretch and the dog is almost completed. See how pink that area is here compared with the neck that we side of the neck that we did last week. And then this area on the back of the neck that was done once again before that. There's not even a line where we stopped and where we started. And it's very flattering for the dog to have this cheeks and throat area here much shorter than what it is on the back. Gives a sort of a clean cut look appearance to the head. And that is the reason why we always do it last. And when I get on to the fine grooming, I'll show you that that is the area we always want re-stripped if you're grooming your dog for show. Re-stripped before the show, that is. Note I'm still holding the skin firm from the back of the neck. It's amazing just how often you hold the skin firm from up there when working on the neck. A handy position. Now, I mentioned before about this area here. This is a very tricky and very critical area to do and it is most important that you get it right or you'll ruin the whole of the dog's expression. The blending will be done later, the blending or fine grooming that is, but in the meantime you must strip down from the corner of his eye vertically to where that line meets 
there's his mouth across there. So I still have a little bit to get off. That is so that when you view the dog from the front, you get that square look. The hair on top of the nose here provides quite a useful place to steady the dog from and note I'm keeping that skin tight on his cheeks as I work with my arm. That is also useful. So, there's his mouth. And I have now completed that line vertically down. So watch that very closely because that is where I will start to tell you to blend from in my fine grooming chapter. I am now working along to the line underneath. I have now done this throat area and with the dog's head on my knee I have worked up here to the beard line. Now I'll show you the piece at the corner of his mouth. There is his mouth there. I have a question. There is the corner of his mouth just there. I am now going to strip this little section up here right to the corner of his mouth. Now it's important that you get this all off at this stage because you want the colour through. And you'll note that I'm holding the dog over with my other hand, working with him on my lap. And in fact, I often work with the dogs on my lap when I'm doing the head, as I said before. Now here, I have got right up to the mouth itself. Now you be good boy. And I'll show you how to blend that into the beard at a later date. But in fact, there's the corner of his mouth right there. And note on the underside, I have come very slightly forward, leaving a little tiny piece of lip here, clean. See that? Brushing the top beard upwards, there's the bottom beard, there's his teeth, there's the bottom beard. There is a small section there, clean at this point of time, and that line goes straight downwards into the beard. So, it's straight down that way. There's a couple of little bits there that I haven't got exactly right. And it is a vertical line straight down, right across. There is the view from underneath. We're lucky, the dog's got his mouth open. So you can see exactly that point straight across to the other side. And the top portion of the head, you have a vertical line down that way, a horizontal line across that way, and there it is, quite squared off in fact, and ready for the blending, which we will commence next week. So now, with six weeks growth on the dog's back, and the cheeks and throat just done, we have now stripped the dog completely and next week I will commence my chapter on the fine grooming. But first we now have a summary of the six weeks stripping program.